Hey there, everybody. It's Rob. I am back with uh, Infinite Realities. We are going to do a little tour of... Well, let's see. I, I was kind of debating. There's a couple areas I want to show off next. Uh, there is the Nether. I've been doing a lot of stuff there around my Nether hub slash observatory and building that up around there. But I think I'm going to go back to one of my older areas, one of my first, actually my first really, really major build. And that is, well, let me change the view here. That is actually way right down here. Kukamats, the pyramid, named after the Mayan god of creation, one of the serpent gods, or one of the gods of creation, I guess. Uh, but first, a lot of changes going on around here, and we will get to these in future episodes. But uh, I have a nether wart farm here. I've updated the vine farm because I found a weeping, or uh, sorry, warped forest in the uh, nether. So I've added warped vines to the vine farm. I've got a new apiary for automated honeycomb harvesting there i've got a new addition to the field back here so i want to start expanding the fields over here and let's see what else do we have um, i've labeled things uh so like we've got the spider spawner here the skeleton spawner there and the zombie spawner there because those are all underground i've been working on an underground village in the ravine that kind of spans it starts here cuts across this way but also cuts down this way and one of my ideas is I want to have a water elevator that basically comes up in the middle of the river here I've figured out where it's going to go I just haven't really added that yet and these are real close I've just uh, so this actually I have a connection I haven't have detail it out but that connects from here down into the ravine um, the main entrance to the ravine is actually under water over here by the tree farm I should maybe label the tree farm there too separately on its own thing. And then over here, we've got an ice farm. Uh, I have got, I built it up in the mountains there. It works pretty well. Each round of ice, it's, it's not like fully automated, but it's automated in the sense where I push a button and it drops a gravel block to then create the source blocks on the side, except for that one missing corner, then become source blocks cascading to make source blocks through the whole platform. Uh, once it freezes, I break them up with silk touch and they flow into a hopper collection. I want to add a collection system that basically takes these down to a uh, some sort of facility down at the river edge. As if it's, they would use this, rather than carrying the blocks down the mountain, they would send them down this sort of water chute to the riverside and then they get stored there for then transport, pick up and transport down the river. But that will be coming up later. For now, we are going to head over to the pyramid. So we're going to do a couple of things on the way, though. Let's see here. Oh, we've had uh, some more additions to the family. We've got another zombie piglet here. I haven't quite decided what these guys are going to do or what job they're going to have. Uh, we do have the, the cook over there in the, in the mess hall. So we need to find something for these guys to do. Make them earn their keep. One of the things, so originally I had a tunnel going into the pyramid that would carry villagers from the villager breeder I had set up. I've reworked that. I now have basically a cargo rail that goes into there. And I've already preloaded this chest. I'm going to add a few more. So basically what I can do is I can take and add things to this chest that uh, over time, the things that I want to send over for trading with. And then when I'm ready, when that chest is full on that minecart, just hit the button. It sends it there. And while it's there, I can put more things in here or whatever. Uh, since it goes into my spawn chunks area, it does not despawn. Then to get up, uh, this is separate. They run on the same trestle, the same bridge system. This goes up and then on the lower level. But then we need to take the upper level for the passenger ride. Up, up, and away. All right. And then, well, we'll show getting back down later. So I have a bed up here in case it's too close to dark and I need to sleep or when I get back, I need to sleep. So we just hop in the minecart, hit the button. Now this is going to take about a minute, so I am going to time lapse this. All right, and we are at the end. So you might have seen some brief glimpses. So back at the jungle trees over that way. You might have seen some flames that is from the original iron farm uh golem hitting there 
So this is a smaller pyramid that is just sort of our way station entrance in. The line for the cargo goes below us down here. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Let's go check out. So I just had to, um, I added these serpents to the pyramid somewhat recently, uh, relatively recently compared to the pyramid itself. And they are modeled after, so the gods of creation from the Mayans, uh, Kokomats was one of them. They're supposed to be winged serpents. I haven't figured out the wing details yet, but these are taken from uh, Meg Ray, I think it is. I will put a link to her playlist. She's got some great tutorials on different sculptures that I think are really nice. Oh, and there's some poppies falling in there now. Um, so this is my second iron farm that I did to, this is in the spawn chunks, uh, barely. So it does run very consistently. As you can see, I have uh, a fair amount. I just emptied out about four blocks worth. Uh, this previously took all the poppies out. So you can see the iron and stuff about to fall. The way this is set up is I have, let's see if we can see that up there. I have a zombie in a mine cart uh, just going back and forth. I think it's on four or five rails back and forth going up and down in a U shape to scare and then get out of sight line of the villagers that are up on this side. And then I have a three by three area, actually only two by two of it is actually spawnable in, um, for the golem to spawn in. The rest is glass. So there's of the nine squares, five are glass in kind of an L shape to help keep them from getting stuck in the walls. And then it washes them to this corner where there's the lava blade, the drops fall down. Uh, I, now I know it would be more efficient to have them drop down here, but I wanted the look of nothing, no part of it being down here. And as you can see, I get more than enough iron. I have so much iron, I really have no idea what to do with it yet. And there's more. And then the cobwebs basically slow it down so it does fall straight down into this hopper here, into that chest, into that hopper, into that double chest. So, And then I have a uh, auto composter for dealing with the poppies getting some more meal there all right so on the serpents i forget the name of the second serpent and i guess i may do something slightly different right now they just have different eyes this one has emerald stones for the eyes that one has redstone block for the eyes kind of give them a so they're a little bit individual uh, i thought about trying to make them look different stones but um, actually, I like how these look, and I don't know what stones I would use to give another distinct look to that one. So um, that's what these are now. So let's take a look. Oh, the so as far as this goes, the Space Invaders, that is basically my proof that aliens built the pyramids. You can see the one sort of tractor beaming blocks into place on that one there. And then that's their little guard. I do want to do a few more of these up in the air, around the area. I just... It's on the to-do list. We'll get around to it one of these days. So quick outside tour. Um, we'll go up. All these stairs, get our cardio in. Do, 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 do. And I like using the, I like the look of the soul fire. Uh, and so it's just soul sand uh, here. I have fire spread off. So I don't have to worry about them like spreading to anything. You can see a little bit here into the top. Um, so there's this, uh, it's really weird. It seems like if I try to enclose that in on the top, it breaks it. And we're getting close to sunset. We're gonna have to find a place to sleep here pretty quick. Um, so this is sort of like the altar. Uh, let me just grab my bed so we have that just in case. Now down here is the pathway, one of the pathways from the original village. There's some of the others. Let's go ahead and put our bed down and not just yet. Um, on the back side, I just, so I have two different layers where I just have a circle of dirt around them to add some life onto the outside of the pyramid. And on the back, I just threw a bunch of bamboo in just cause, and every once in a while I'll go through and just hack it down. And, oh, there's our fox. We have a fox over there. So I've gave that fox some berries at one point, And so it's been hanging out. Let's go to sleep. Uh, so it's been hanging out, uh, and I hear it every once in a while when I'm inside the pyramid. 
down there I have a little bit of a mine structure that I used for getting some of the stones as I was working on this and I kind of detailed the outside like it's a little encampment um, I don't really use it actively it's just there that column there is pretty much as far as I can tell my spawn point uh, the reason I didn't keep my world stuff around here I mean it was kind of cool because the village real close but I was so close to zero zero that I decided to go over there for actually starting my building process um, I have just detailed vines I haven't really detailed the blocks themselves as much as I would possibly like to at some point that's just that's a lot of work um, going through and just mixing in other blocks um, but it's kind of on that eventual to-do list so you can see some of the foundations from a few of the things that were here before and all the pathways I haven't bothered getting rid of any of that uh, and like I said I've got some other just sort of plants and stuff around the perimeter now there's actually a couple of layers uh, at least on this side and I had to dig out a lot of that hill on that side that are still basically under ground level I guess you could say so I've got stuff like this um, I like the way the vines um, I should bring some of the nether vines some of the crimson and other stuff over here um, then I have ways to like get from one side of the stairway to the other if I need to that way uh, on different that no I don't think I have it on every well no it looks like I do I just maybe just haven't filled those blocks in I don't necessarily need it on every level it's just there this is one of the ways into the pyramid I'm not going to show you that right now though and then down here is my little work area for when I'm working on things out here it just kind of keeps it tucked away um, I need to do any smelting crafting stone cutting and don't have a whole lot in there last time I used that was probably when I was working on the serpents all right let's go back in the middle the mini pyramid and I'll show you the main way so the tunnel that goes into the pyramid underneath is what I used originally for bringing a bunch of villagers over. It was a waterway that would bring the villagers over from the jungle tree villager breeder. And it comes in here. Now, like I said, I'm using it for the cargo line. And it's probably done unloading at this point, yeah. Um, so all that stuff is here now. So let's bring some of this with, so I'll have to come back for some of this. Uh, but yeah, it's down here waiting and then I've also got a bunch of stuff that I just sent over here just to have for if I wanted to work on things over here. I used a series of one-way gates for the villagers coming here and then there was a gate here that they could use. If they were smart enough to trip it, they could come upstairs and then from here trip that one. Um, I wasn't really using it down here for much, but then I decided, well, I had a villager that I had some good trades for pumpkins and melons that I decided to put a little mini farm down here that I could harvest once in a while. <sighs> Sad note on the villagers. I came by here a little earlier and something keeps, I don't know if they're, it's killing them or what, uh, but I am losing my villagers. I was down to like five villagers. Um, I had a few more bred up while I was here last time. I don't know if they'll continue to do so. That's why I brought a bunch of food so I can try to feed these guys and get them to start doing some breeding because uh, it sucks. Uh, I've been, I mean, I had I had over 30 villagers in here at one point uh, and it's a great area, but I cannot figure out what's happening to them. Literally, I was in spectator mode overnight and I lost my, my cleric and one of the babies grew up and became the new cleric and it's like, which is fine in that sense, but I have, I didn't have any mobs come in, so I don't know if they're getting, I, 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 you know, I've got like fires here, but I don't have places that, as far as I can find, where they can go, where they can hurt themselves and disappear like that, and it's really mind-boggling to me. I have not been able to figure out what's going on. Well, let's give this guy half a stack of beets and, oh, no, not that, wrong one, wrong one, sorry. Dude, pick up the beets. I'm trying to feed you. Come on. Take some beets. Take some food, food, food. I need you strong. He has no interest in my beets. OK, 
Okay, there we go. He's working. Take some beats. Take lots of beats. Thank you. All right, and then we'll give some to the fisherman. See if we can't get a jungle dude. Oh, are you trading for beats? Oh, you are. Okay, we'll trade these ones. Level you up. Okay, what do you got now? Eh, not bad. Apples, I get plenty of apples. Alright. Have some more beats. Alright, we'll feed these guys some more later. Um, let's see if I can get... Uh, I'll take a stack of carrots, put the rest over here. Do, do, do. I brought some chicken too, just to maybe cook up later. And string for the fisherman. Oh, how many string does he want? Because I got string in the barrel downstairs. 20. Okay, we'll be back. All right, so we'll tour the area. So this, and as we get to other villagers, we'll give them some food too. Actually, we'll bring another stack with us. So this is my new leather worker. He just grew up recently. Uh, we'll take the beets. Oh, I have carrots too. Um, what is he trading? Okay, I'll have to bring some leather with me next time. This, I have no cook right now. I had a really good cook for raw chicken uh, butcher trade. Oh, I need to fix that. The logs are totally the wrong way. Hold on a second. Let me make sure we get both of these the same. Sorry, a little housekeeping here. Why are you not? There we go. There. Looks better. Okay. Uh, so this is the mess hall. We've got the little work table. I put this up here because I got tired of villagers and iron golems climbing up on the work table. I mean, how do you work when you're iron golem? You know, you got to worry about cutting iron golem's foot. Smoker, regular furnace, some meat roasting on a spit. All the workstations pretty much have a bed for at least one of the people working in that area. This one I got the leather work because I use the cauldron for a sink. Um, I may change that before I trade with him and maybe make put a trap door here and just waterlog that for uh, and then move that cauldron because I, I don't know that I want a leather worker. I don't have a use for them. Ooh, let's see. Let's see if we can get anybody here to eat. And so it looks like some of my other ones have grown up. Come on, eat, 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 people, eat. Eat, eat. It's good for you. Beets are good for you. Ba, 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 ba. Fast way. Speed feeding. All right, hopefully that means we'll get a couple more. Um, I don't want another fisherman and farmer. Okay, so we got another farmer. That's good. Um... Because I have barrels here for storage, I get fishermen, so I don't need a lot of fishermen. Um, all right, we'll continue the tour. So this is the farm area. This thing's gone through a few iterations. Um, originally, I had the shepherds were over here with some farming. I had pumpkin and melon patches, and then a farm in the area in the corner. Who was doing that? Somebody's making weird noises. Um, then I did a big terraced thing. Pro uh, terraced terraces. Um, problem is the golems would climb up there and then they would wreck the crops. Then I went with this and I have it so it's not tall enough for the golems to get in. And I really like this, how this one turned out. Um, I have four different levels so I can have up to four hopefully different uh, farmers. Uh, the only thing I might do is come back and replace the fences with leaves and make it a uh, leaf canopy on these. Um, and then fences to keep people from getting up on top of there. Nothing really fits under there. This is just um, space. Well, I can't figure out why these two bushes will not grow up. Oh, we got a baby. I see a bouncing baby. And a jungle baby bonus. All right. So I had vines across here. Um, I, and they were... Kind of, you know, I figure kind of like giving privacy because this is the main sleeping area. Oh, it's time to go to bed here pretty quick. Um, but all I came in and all all the golems, but like two of them, were in here climbing the vines, hanging out in here, just 
doing whatever. And it's like, wait a minute. Oh, we got, oh, three, one, two, three, four babies. Nice. You guys are totally getting us going again. All right, we're going to go to sleep real quick. We'll be right back. Oh, it's not quite time for me. I can't go yet. Um, so I took those vines down so they don't get the privacy because otherwise the golems just, they were hiding there. They were just shirking their duties. All right, so this is the shepherd's area. Uh, now I'm streaming this live on Discord as uh, right now uh, on one of the channels I'm on, just because I can. So um, I may do some cuts here and there to if I need to take anything out. Dude, what are you doing up there? Oh, man, he must have got. I might have to move that bed. Dang it! All right, we'll worry about him in a bit. Um, so shepherd's area loom. I only have the one loom out here. I, I have room for another one, but until I get more villagers, I took one of the looms out because I don't want to end up with two shepherds right away. Uh, of course, cocoa beans for them to use for dyeing the wool. This is a quarry area uh, for the stone cutter. He has his little workstation set up here. Um, I could kind of show. Let's go downstairs. So I can either take the ladder down, or more fun is just taking the vines. Nothing. This goes further down in there. So I was trying to do some streaming while I was recording this and it just wasn't working right so I had to stop the stream. So sorry about any sort of cuts in here but hopefully the rest will be just fine. So we climb back up. So I did use that as the place to get a few little miscellaneous resources as I was building this. We have a stone cutter now. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I got it. so I traded some bricks for him with him earlier, or Mason, I guess you could say. This is his area. We've got a place for him, an invented furnace for him to smelt clay or whatever. Uh, let's see what else. Okay, the smithing area. What are you doing in there? How did you even get in there, dude? Get out of there. How did you even get in there? I don't. Go, go, get out. Get out of there. Go. Okay. I probably will like time lapse that previous bit just because you were just being annoying. Sorry about that. See, that's what I'm talking about. They, they keep getting up on tables. All right. Where was I? So this is the smithing area. They have their little sleep area here. Uh, lava for smelting stuff. Uh, let's see what else. There are different workstations over here. Another bed. This is the woodworker's area, the lumber, and he's not really lumber jack. This is where I built my first bandsaw. Uh, that's also over at the settlement at the lumber mill there. And then he's got a little work table. I got an extra crafting table back there. Um, then over here, babies, this is the chapel. We have a guest chaplain, cleric. Good, you're still the same one. Um, oh, he's up on top now. So I suppose if I move the flower pot, he might be able to actually get out of there, but that's okay. He's been just up there preaching for quite a while. Hi. Yeah, nice to see you. Jungle baby. Uh, oh, I'll show you back here. So he's got his little private area back here with a bed and stuff. I had the workstation, the brewing stand back here, but he, they were never pathfinding it to it properly to reset their trades. So I stuck it out here instead. Um, down there also, there's a trap door. That corner leads downstairs. More. Oh, are we going to get some more? Why am I getting sparkles? I'm getting sparkles. Um... This is the main fountain. We get a little view from it up here, and with the tree of I don't know. I hate to call it the tree of life, but you know that's just their town center. Um, let's head upstairs real quick before we have to go to bed again. 
I'll try to make that kind of a checkerboard, sort of a canopy kind of a look. So we'll go up here real quick. This is the archery range for the Fletcher. Uh, we'll use his bow because I don't want to like set anything on fire over here. Let's see. Not very good at this yet. Oh, that's not too bad. Eh, almost. All right. I do want to maybe make that a little bit harder, and I want to maybe make some redstone stuff. I could also extend that by maybe putting it up over there, but then it would make it hard to get the arrows. I don't know. I don't want to put a roof on the chapel. My original idea was to build like a huge like dormitory up here, but the villagers just were not pathfinding to the beds. Uh, I found they would pathfind better if I had some workstations up here. So I have the cartographers up here, and then next to him, the librarian. This is Mr. Fixit. He's my mending trader. Um, it went up to down to seven. Oh, because I traded with him before I left. Oh, let's well get some more glass while I'm here. Because I have limited sand, so any time I can get some glass from him is always nice. And it looks like it's bedtime. So we're going to go, we're going to borrow the cartographer's bed. And, oh, here's a quick update. Uh, this is just the immediate area. I may add the ones on the sides here at some point if I add some structures to actually map out. We'll see. I can't go to bed yet. That's so annoying. These guys are sleeping and I can't. Uh, but this gives you a little overview. Uh, and I have a golem in the fountain. This is going to almost wrap things up. I do want to show one more thing before we go. But first, we got to go to bed. I'll be right back. Uh, last thing. So, I'm still trying to figure out what's going on. Like I said, for some reason, my villagers are disappearing on me. Um, I was up over 30 at one point, And I had like 24 golems running around in here. It was kind of nuts. Then um, how, just over half of them disappeared. And I got them to start breeding again because I my, lost my farmers and I was able to get a farmer going by f me feeding them. Um, and now I come back uh, earlier today and I was down to like five villagers and it was so, I you know, I just have no idea what's going on. I stayed up through the night in spectator mode just to see if I could see maybe, I mean, look, everywhere these leaves are, are jack lanterns under there casting light. And I have not been able to find any place that's dark enough to spawn. Uh, yes, there's dark areas up there, but there's that's not there's not floor up there for them to spawn on. The top of the tree is leaves. They can't spawn up there. The only block possible to spawn is a glowstone block that, I mean, you know, it's too bright then. So I have no idea what's going on. And then while I was in spectator mode, my cleric disappeared sometime in that night and i have no idea what happened so it's kind of annoying but at the peak when i had a ton of golems running around i decided to rig up a way to kind of um recycle a few of them think of this as a much smaller scale iron farm all right close the gate so we don't get any villagers sneaking in here because yes i don't want you in here Turn around. You don't want to see this. Uh, and then I just kind of do this. Oh, I lost the lead. That's fine. Ugh. Yep. Cooperating. There we go. All right. Close the because we don't need anybody else seeing this. And then we wait. Like, see? There's the lead. Get bum, 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 bum. And give it a sec. There we go. Recycled iron. So basically what I have down there is just your typical setup, of, um, except it's over a hole that drops down. There's a water source under that block that flows that way to a bubble column over there. Pretty basic. I like it. It works good. I may use that for other stuff in another way at some point. We'll see. We'll take this way out to go up front to say our goodbyes. A lot of doors, a lot of gates, or a lot of gates basically to help keep villagers from getting in and out. Oh, look at all the babies running around. Good. All right. Um, so, yeah. 
Thanks for hanging out. Um, we're still working on the mystery of the missing villagers and what's going on, but at least we're having, I don't know, I guess they're having fun repopulating. We'll see. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, let's see. Next coming up, I will probably try to do the nether and go from there. So thanks. We'll see you next time. Bye now. All right. That was kind of really pathetic. Bye. Bye.